Jerkles. I am Flitz, and you're watching Geek Down, the only show where your Metachlorian count is counted by how many Pokemon cards you have. Tonight's show, we are talking about the greatest video game of all time. What is it? We don't know either. We're gonna debate about that. But we cannot debate about this alone. We need people who have brothers named Luke. One of those people is the Jovenshire, Joshua Ovenshire. I just got that like 10 seconds later. Fuck you, Flitz. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Joshua Evan Ovenshire. You can follow me at Twitter, the Jovenshire. Uh, I'm going to be taking us through a segment we like to call Pitch This here on Geek Down, where it gives you a chance to pitch us an idea and we debate a winner and give you a cool prize for it. Uh, I'm also the guy who talks with my hands. Uh, today's Pitch This question was, if you could take any bad game, like one of the worst games you've ever played, and reboot it so it had a chance to be the best game of all time, what would it be? What game needs that second chance? Go ahead and tweet us the answer and uh, add at Geek Down Show to the end of it. And really? And then um, and we shall pick three of the top winners at the end of the show and give you prizes, because we're awesome. That was a question. That would, what? No. Uh, but again, there's more people on this team than just me and Flitz, so let's go ahead and take it to Brett Noobsaibot. I hate Mortal Kombat, but guys, I am <laughs> Brett Naborikawa. I'm going to take you through the geek news in a little bit, but we have a guest tonight I'm very excited about, so take it away, Flitz. Our guest is... Totally from the Totally Rad Show. He's also an actor, and he does this thing called Weekend Confirmed. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. Mr. Jeff Kanata. Hey, guys. Happy to be here. Woo the crowd goes wild. <laughs> it's, it was almost like they couldn't see you. Yeah, well, they're way over there. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. And up in the booth, our voice from heaven, our director, the lovely... Matt Robb. Hey guys, what's going on? How are you? Hey. hey! Are we ready for the uh, for the awesomeness of Geek Down episode, what is this, 34? Yeah! Yeah, yeah something yeah. like yeah. that, right? This is the, the season finale! Season finale?! Yeah! That's crazy talk. Uh, that is absolute know. crazy talk. <laughs> well, I know that uh, I'm up here in the box talking to you guys, but uh, we've got somebody talking to the fans, and that's Miss Chrissy Lynn, everybody. Wave, Miss Chrissy Lynn! Hello! Hey! <laughs> hey, guys! Hello. We've got Mr. Fantastic, Curtis Love No Five, Cup Check, Real Men Were Killed, Stick and Fuck Quad, HD Rebel 88, Icon, Jet City Muse, Jay okay. Sanchez 102, K Bar 60, Damn. Maverick, Music Life, Music is Life 20, My Snooch, Christine Eats, <laughs> Pimp to You, Vigo the Carpathian, Carpathian Suffer Cat, Full Metal Gamer, Movie Matt, Kujujuwa, Steve Cab. In the chat. Wow. Michael Machine Guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the fastest I've ever that seen was, your that mouth was move. Impressive. Impressive. So before we get into this show, <laughs> let's let's talk to let's talk to Jeff a little more. You're you're you do the totally rad show. I do. A lot of guys, a lot of people must know you. Mostly that. guys. Let's be honest. Uh, you do Weekend Confirmed. A lot of people don't know you're an actor as well. I am. Let's talk about all those things. Let's talk about all your talents. Let's just okay. spill them out on my face. Uh we could do that. <laughs> okay. Or uh, I noticed you just said Vigo the Carpathian is in the uh, yeah chat room. yeah. So why don't I just do this? Okay. Is, had him throwing a party for a bunch of children when all the while the slime was under the building, so they packed up and holed up, got a grip, came equipped with their proton packs and their backs, and they split. His name is Vigo, the master e of evil, trying to battle my boys. Yo, that ain't legal. Damn! Damn! Is that, is that not pretty cool? That's, that's, that's a cool. Bobby Brown song. <laughs> yeah. He used to be someone before he started doing coke. I knew that before, oh. before Whitney. While he started doing coke. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> well, it, the, because of Whitney. I just I got inspired by the by the chat room. Um, good. Yeah, it's but I knew there's a lots of fun stuff. Uh, TotallyRadShow.com if you want to check out. We do a daily show that reviews video games and movies and comic books and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, we can confirmed is all video games all the time. It's a weekly show on ShackNews.com. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm an actor um, all over the place here in LA, and uh, you can see lots of my stuff uh, on YouTube's and uh, and in various commercials and things that are happening all the time. Is there anything coming up that we should be totally excited about? Uh, there's a couple of web series that uh, haven't been quite announced yet, but um, if you stick oh, to NDA, my... Oh, NDA. So. You have a friend DA? You have a friend DA? <laughs> friend DA. Okay. Yeah. Nobody tell the internet. <laughs> now, if you follow me on Twitter, at uh, Jeff Kanata, that's two N's, one T, you will uh, be able to follow all my cool stuff. Awesome. Well, there you go. Permission to stalk Jeff Kanata. And I promise not to rap anymore. No, I, I'm perfect. I'm okay with that. Okay. I don't know about the the, the studio audience. The was studio. like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know. Yeah. 
I was like, I get it. I understand. I'm hip. I'm down. <laughs> right? Wow. <laughs> that is the widest we will ever see Flint's. No, probably not. I have no children and I have a job. So, moving <laughs> on. <laughs> Matt Rob. I mean, Matt Rob. <laughs> Would you say Brett. my name? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Brett, Whoa. what do we have that is geek worthy? Oh, lots of news. Wow, I just don't know how to follow that up, but <laughs> let's just cut to the geek worthy segment. <laughs> All right, guys, so this week it was announced that J.J. Abrams has finally officially signed on to direct Star Trek II. I mean, was there much doubt that he wasn't going to? I mean, <laughs> it's, his, it's, it's his baby. Like, there it is. You all loved it. It's the best Star Wars movie since <laughs> Return of the Jedi. <laughs> I mean, that's what we all have to look forward to. So Star Wars 2. Wait, wait. I, th I think we need to J.J. Abr Abrams-ify this yeah. poster a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I agree. There, there you go. go. There go. <laughs> More lens flare. That's, that's what we're going to... I like the lens flare, personally. You know, if, if uh, Super 8 had done better, he may not have directed it. I think, think. So? I think if Super 8 had been a huge hit and he'd been like, I don't want to do sequels. But, um, you know, <laughs> More he doesn't talk like that, me. by the way. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. do sequels. Yeah. I, I'm actually looking forward. Uh, even though I, I might have a distaste for George Lucas, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I loved the last Star Trek movie. In fact, I think it was the first Blu-ray movie that I owned. Did you say Star Trek? He said Star Trek. Star, Star Trek. You know, the tracking across the star. <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> but, um, so I didn't think there was much doubt, but hearing it, I'm, I'm looking forward to the sequel. Maybe we'll get Shatner this time. Do we want Khan? Is that what we want? No. You don't want Khan? <laughs> I don't want Khan. No? I feel like people... Shaka Khan, yeah. <laughs> I would watch Shaka Khan in Star Trek 2. <laughs> Ain't nobody yeah. why? In space? That would be pretty sweet, I'll be why? honest. You ain't even ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, I, I, I'm hoping you know some more Shaka Khan songs. You are racist. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, more lens flare, more Star Trek, more J.J. Abrams. I think that's very geek worthy. I I, th I think it's geek. I, I really I did really enjoy the first uh, Star Trek, so I'm gonna say it's geek worthy. Yeah. And he's a villain. We had no. I mean, the villain was uh, you know inconsequential in the first movie. It was an introduction movie, which mm -hmm. it did well, but mm -hmm. you know. I just I really liked how they villain. how they reboot the Star Trek. Star Trek. <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> How they reboot the franchise, uh, I thought it was very clever and it, it worked well. So, see if they can take it to the next level in the sequel. Uh, completely unrelated to this, I want to announce uh, a film that I'm going to be in, actually. It's called Star Trek. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a straight to DVD. It's one of those movies that you, they mark it so your mom like, makes a mistake and grabs that one instead. And you're like, Mom, please go buy me Star Trek. And she's like, oh, there it is. So, it's much cheaper than this Star Trek version. <laughs> The first well, intergalactic that. locomotive following yep. the Star Tracks to the stars. This. I am nothing Star if not an opportunist. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Moving on from this. For those, for those, by the way, who want to know, when we make fun of Jovenshire, we have to bring this image up. And <laughs> oh, come on. On. It's just got to come in. It's got to call back, Joshua, and it has to come back every week. <laughs> Really? He was yeah, woken up in his pajamas <laughs> and sent outside. Are they footy pajamas, Jovan? <laughs> Are they footy pajamas? We'll never know. <laughs> so, other cool things on the internet we found over with our friends at globalgeeknews.com. Go ahead and give them a check out. Uh, we saw this awesome image. That's not a phrase. <laughs> I'm starting to wow. phrases. Make wow. sure to give these guys a check out, guys. <laughs> give them wow. a check out. That is a Star Destroyer, if you guys can't see close enough, made completely of Lego. 43,000 Lego bricks to make that thing that weighs 108 pounds. Well, it's got the red stripe down the center. Isn't that the, uh, the Republic Destroyer? You guys are way too calm about that. That is fucking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I agree. I just, all I can say was wow. Fucking awesome. <laughs> it was fast. All I can say was wow. That's only one picture. There's like 12 pictures on that website. <laughs> the level of detail, <coughs> that is insanely I awesome. Think it's, I think it's three. And Wait, it's 180 pounds. Yeah. That's that, three that, pounds this, lighter than I am. Wait, heavier. Too much information. Light, okay. <laughs> That's, the saddest thing about that is that all the pictures, you, don't, you didn't see all the pictures, but all the pictures are like of his messy room and stuff. And it's like, it's so heavy that he fucking built it and he's like, this is where it's got to stay forever. <laughs> I can't even move it to take the case around it. Yeah. Well, like, like, do you think he made it like halfway? Then he's like, oh, oh, crap. All right, this is staying on the kitchen table now. Cool, I can make this work. I think he was like, all right, last one and done. Awesome. 
<laughs> and hernia. <laughs> Looks good here. Yeah. Honey, we're gonna need a second table. Yeah. It only makes it truly internet if it shows up on Tumblr uh, with a dildo on the table next to it. <laughs> no? no? Am I the only one? I like to think that as soon as he spent six hours on that, he then realized that he's wasted his life. I would like to think that, oh my God, what have I done for the past six weeks? <laughs> That's my disapproved face. <laughs> I'm just sad they don't sell this Star Destroyer kit in like a store like the size of my house that you can just take home and unwrap on Christmas morning. I bought morning. the Millennium Falcon. It was 500 bucks, I bought it. What, how, how, what, I haven't what? built it yet, but I bought oh. it. <laughs> how long have you had it? It's not the how real one. I thought I've had it in over a year. Yeah. And you've and never had, had a Star I need another room in my house. <laughs> I'm, I like, I'm like that guy, I'm like, I need a room. And uh, I bought it when I thought I was getting a house and then I didn't get a house and so now it's my incentive to have a house. This is essentially yeah. more extreme than the people who in Japan who built Gundams. Yeah. This is like on that level. It's that is awesome. So was it geek worthy? Yes, definitely. Uh, geek worthy, yeah. The, the, the time and dedication that was put into that. Plus, it's now like a fixture in the house. So yeah, and you got worthy. all the right colors. That's something I could never do as a kid. Me either. I didn't have the right pieces. Oh, I had those. So moving on, it is totally geek worthy. Everyone totally agrees, right? Agree. Yeah. Moving on to the debate, greatest video game of all time. IGN apparently did this whole thing, and they didn't add a game that was past the year two, 1998. I wasn't even born then. Wait, yes I was. <laughs> what makes the greatest game of all time? What, what, starting from that, what, what, what do you say is a part of the ball of the greatest game of all well, time? Well, as you mentioned with IGN not having anything in the last 12 years or so, uh, it looks like they're just aiming at the most inspirational games. Like what games did we play as children that inspired us to go into this field? And I, I think that there's a whole other realm that we aren't, aren't messing with. I wanna look at like the best game. Like what game now is raising the bar and how does that compare with some of the more influential games uh, in the past? Well, there's the issue of the influential in, like influencing the best, where the new it's a hard games, one to say, isn't it? it is. I'm, I feel like Jovenshire right now. But <laughs> the new games are so good because they're built upon the foundation that these classics have set already. So you can't have a greatest game of all time without the classics. And it's also very difficult to have perspective on something if it's new. If you have something that has been around for 20 years, you have the perspective of time, and so you can judge it in the annals of history. And I did say annals. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's so so I think that there's there should be more weight given to something that's a little older and has and you have context historical context. Uh, that isn't to say there aren't great games coming out every year and all the time, but uh, I think you can see how things are 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 fit in uh, in historical context if they're older. Well, uh, on that note, like Chrissy, do we have any chats coming from the chat room saying like how they feel about it? Uh, well, everyone's. Naming games, pretty much. <laughs> what, what names have we got? Uh, Resident Evil by Mr. Cupcheck. Good choice. Bioshock. Cupcake! <laughs> Viz, Viz underscore 03 says Bioshock. Um, E.T. from the Atari says Telemundo 714. A snarky, ironic. Custer's That's Revenge from Vegs. <laughs> Um, Aren't all the copies of E.T. on Atari buried in the desert somewhere? Isn't that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, fuck you, Matt, says Cup Check. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite oh, video game, oh. too! <laughs> and, of course, naturally, Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time. From Maverick. Uh, well, 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 the issue is in your, you talking about uh, the games having history and being able to judge over the annals. <laughs> Does the game, the game... Are you making fun of me? No, I'm making fun with you. Ah. Uh, the game near has, me. Near me, <laughs> exactly. It. In your vicinity. Got it. Uh, the game has to essentially be timeless. And, and I mean, styles are changing all the time. Uh, do all these games, or, or the game that some may consider the greatest game of all time, how are they timeless? What what makes a game? Well, are we going to start talking titles or what? Are we going to start mentioning game? Are we just talking? Are we talking setting context? We're setting, setting context. We're setting, right. we're setting. We're setting up. Setting the stage. Right. We're setting we're up because we're, I think we're, it's we're different. Looping. It's a different question. That's too much. The, uh, I think it's a different question <laughs> than uh, what's your favorite game? Because uh, my favorite game of all time is Ultima Seven. I would never say it's the best game of all time. Okay. Because I think it's a different question. And I, I there's a game that I love that feels like it was made for me, but I don't think it. It is that best game of all time, objective kind of for everyone, and I think those are two very different <clears throat> value propositions, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I know what I, I mean. I can mention mine, but you guys go ahead and 
Well, uh, look at it like the most influential. I, I don't, when Mario Brothers 3 came out, like everyone knew at that time, like this is an amazing game. It's going to go a, a great distance. It's going to sell a lot of copies. Because it was in the wizard. Well, yeah, if you're in the <laughs> wizard, you're just so down the power for glove. We saw well that way. Good point, good point. <laughs> uh, but how many games are coming out now that you know, like after playing it, like, you know what? In 10 years, I'm going to be playing this game on an emulator. That's illegal. Yeah, uh, totally. Well, the, well, allegedly playing it on an emulator. <laughs> uh, for example, like, um, <laughs> as we uh, fans of the show know that I'm a, I'm a huge Mass Effect fan. And as <laughs> soon as I played that game, I knew that, yes, like this is going to be a game that, that's raising the bar for all games. And we will be playing it continually. And it will, it's going to be a franchise that we'll see more of. Uh, how much are we seeing that with games like uh, Call of Duty? Like, yeah, they're, they're producing new games each year, but do they really stand out in, in gaming history? Brett? <laughs> Any response to that? <clears throat> I'm just enjoying the awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the games that's always thrown around as one of the best of all time, our cameraman Anthony loves, is Ocarina of Time. And I feel like that's a very timeless game that's like, it, you play it now, it's been released on the 3DS again, and it still holds up as an amazing game. That's the third release for it now, right? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. But the later Zelda titles have all been built around that same kind of formula, and when you're not evolving too much, they, they're being compared to the greatest one, Ocarina of Time, and they don't, they seem to pale in comparison. So they just fall into the shadow. Yeah, so I think like, like Jeff was saying earlier, with the... Annals. <laughs> the word you're looking for is annals. I don't, don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> I do. Anal. <laughs> you were all thinking it. <laughs> but with the annals of history, you get a better idea of how these games stand up over time. And it's... Well, I think maybe uh, that's why IGN's list has been so like backdated by ten years, maybe. Well, the the modern games do do the classic games, those games that are backdated and should definitely be considered one of the, uh, a greatest game of all time or the greatest game of all time. Do they hold up to what has become the modern art form of video games? Because uh, now games are so much more a full meal and you're getting so much more for your buck and so much more bang for your buck because I remember when Nintendo games were like 90 bucks yeah. and people were freaking out because they're 60 now. Well, you know, the, because technology has progressed, video games have progressed into becoming a storytelling medium instead of merely a game medium. In fact, game is almost a misnomer at this point because uh, you know, so many of the games that are coming out now are, are really meant to tell you a story and have, have it be an interactive storytelling experience rather than a, something that's more along the lines of a reflexive or, uh, you know, mental challenge. It's, it's not, it, it's still that, yes, but we're seeing that progression. You know, you look at something like Heavy Rain, for example, mm -hmm. or uh, games that I think are monumental achievements in, in the medium. Yeah, Shenmue, a great, great example. Uh, there, there's this schism happening between one side of gaming, which is still the Geometry Roses of the world, you know, that's a very contemporary modern game, but it, it's in that old style, and then, you know, the other sort of AAA storytelling experiences. So it's a hard comparison to make uh, because they're offering two very different styles. And I think the older games were of that ilk, and uh, were hampered by technology and didn't have the ability to kind of convey story in the same way. Well, uh, since you were talking about almost like a more casual game like Geometry Wars, uh, it takes me back to Tetris, which I, uh, it's on my top 10 games of all time list because yes, th there might not be any story to it, but it's, it was an ingenious game. The, the structure it was built on is, is just amazing. You can still play it now and, and absolutely love it. Um, I, I are would, there? I would say, my best game of all time, bar none, is Tetris. I think you can make an argument for Tetris being the best video game ever created. And it's probably the only video game that we'll bring up in this entire discussion that will be played 100 years from now. Someone will be playing Tetris on some fucking device someday in 100 <laughs> years, and none of these other games will be played. Yeah. They'll, they'll be like, oh, I remember that, or oh, isn't that so quaint? Tetris is timeless, it's completely timeless, and it works, it's pure, and it will be ported to every piece of tech for the end of the time. Now, why do you think that? Why, there you go. Some, 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 some <laughs> yeah. from the audience. Feel free to support me with applause at any time. <laughs> now, what, um, there isn't a lot of story. It's a very simple game. What do you think makes Tetris such an amazing game? Like, it's only it? possible on a digital medium. 
You can't have an approximation of it in any other medium. It requires interactivity. Uh, and it is absolutely pure and addictive as fuck. If, if My grandma anybody, plays Tetris. Yeah. No, no <laughs> bullshit. My grandma, I, I said, my mom, you playing Tetris on this little ass machine, I'm gonna get you a Game Boy Advance. She was like, baby, you get me a Game Boy Advance. And I, you, it got Tetris? I was like, yes, my mama has Tetris. Baby, you get me a Game Boy Advance with Tetris. I played me some Tetris. I got her. <laughs> Why are you doing the Medea voice? <laughs> I, I have to draw an image of my grandmother for these people. Man, your grandma, grandma is Tyler Perry in drag? <laughs> <laughs> my grandma is an old black woman. So either way, I guess. Ladies and gentlemen, his grandma. <laughs> oh, she's she, no, she's not here. Damn she it. hates planes. Uh, she, 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 <laughs> she, 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 the devil's work. <laughs> <laughs> but she killed, she literally killed the Game Boy Advance. It couldn't, it wouldn't recharge, it wouldn't turn on because she played Tetris so damn much. It's, I think it's the perfect video game. I really do. I mean, I, I, granted, there are much more immersive, much more cinematic experiences, and I love those too. I just don't think, I don't think there's another video game that is transcendent in the same way. Do you think now with the audience that we have that we could create another just that simple of a puzzle game and just that'll take over and last another 10 years? Uh, I think it's certainly possible. What um, about something like, oh man, I hate that I'm gonna say this, but what about Angry Birds? Like, it's a very simple game and everyone is playing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I, I think it's, it's easy to compare. It, it's something that, that everyone's playing. It's very simple to pick up and play. You understand it. <laughs> They're not a fan. <laughs> but um, that, that's actually, let's take a look at some of the more modern day games that we think are the best games of all time. Um, I'm gonna stick to my guns. I'm gonna say Mass Effect because the story is amazing. The characters Which are one? amazing. Which one, Mass Effect 1 or 2 is the uh, best game of all time? I think he's going with the franchise. I'm gonna go with the franchise. I, no, that's, that's not a, a game, cheat. that's a franchise. That's a cheat. All right, I'm gonna go with the cheat. Madden franchise. What's your favorite Batman movie? <laughs> hey Joshua, is your favorite Batman movie the Batman movies? Is that just also your favorite? Yeah. All right, if I was to pick, oh, see, I don't, I, I can't do it because like the first one it has so much of an RPG element, the second one was perfected but more action based, less RPG. Uh, my mind's gonna explode, I can't do this. Perfect. <laughs> that brings up another factor. How do you, how do you <laughs> judge by genre? How, what, what, what genre, how do you choose? It's because there's so many different genres now. How do you choose what specific genre uh, the best game of all time falls into? Well, it well, seems like. Go for it, Jeff. No, no I wasn't that, saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. I was going to say that it, you have to t always take into account how much fun the game is to play because sometimes there's games that are like very cinematic, like very well done, great story, like Metal okay. Gear. Well, Uncharted yeah. is good all around, but Metal Gear, there's like great cinematic story, but you don't play very much. It's marginalizing the game aspect of it, and you need to, to always remember like the game part of it. So, it's like, oh yeah, I'm playing a game. That's right, this is happening. Yeah, so I, uh, that's one key part, I think, and to the, the innovation, because games are always trying to one-up each other, especially with the modern games. Yeah, everyone's trying to raise the bar. Uh, well, how about, uh, let's go back to Chrissy. How's the chat room doing on the topic so far? I thought you'd never ask. Uh, let's see. Two more. Twenty says Tetris is the ultimate bathroom game. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Vigo the Carpathian says Pac-Man will be played in a hundred years. Uh, the ooh. Alien Return. Really? You think so? I don't think so. Says my right sleeve thus far equals Tetris, Mario, Space Invaders, Pac-Man, Link, Sonic, Contra, Duck Hunt, and Torn from Warcraft. And his right sleeve? Yeah. Those, those are all classic um, games. Dick he Man didn't name a new game. Says there. Street Fighter Two came out in 1991. They still play it like it's brand new. Well, you guys were talking for a little bit, so I'm catching up. Well, no, no, no. Maverick says Mass Effect will be IRL in a hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I hope Speaker so. the Carpathian says Josh, Mass Effect isn't the best franchise ever. <sighs> Maverick says no one's gonna play Mass Effect in a hundred years. Big Impact Twenty One says Mass Effect didn't have the best story of all time. Metal Gear Solid series has the best stories of all time. I, okay, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you there. Um, oh shit. It, it's a, <laughs> like, that's a small problem that I'm having with, with uh, overseas games right now. Like, I used to be a huge Resident Evil fan. Uh, I loved the fifth game, but it was just a little too over-the-top action, weird story, which you're seeing a, a lot of overseas games. Uh, like, Metal Gear Solid, the story's just weird and crazy and out there. I think you may so be alone on this. Race. I think you're alone Joe, on this. Joker's <laughs> about to get lynched in the studio. <laughs> They're like, ah, oh, what is he talking about? Shut up. Pelt him oh. with Angry Birds. <laughs> <laughs> Not angry. getting any studio love today. Uh, studio love. 
What, what's your what's your best favorite game of or best game? My best you game, know what I I my best game of all time. I you I'm gonna have to. I really love Mass Effect, uh, and I'm gonna say the Mass Effect franchise. Two. I'm gonna I'm not gonna You're say Mass Effect Two is the best game of all time. No 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 no. That's my my <laughs> best game of all time. That's not what we're asking. Oh, That's not this best episode. game of all time. You know it's it's this is and this is you you swayed you swayed me a little bit. Um, considering the 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 gaming and and. What it is, what it means to be a game, but it might be because I'm old. Uh, so I do, I, I understand totally what you mean by the storytelling games of modern day age and how they're pretty much cinematic and not games traditionally. Traditionally, I would have to go with you and say Tetris. Yeah, really. Uh, the I, reason I, I why, and the reason why is because <laughs> the reason <laughs> <laughs> the reason why is because it is very t- like I said. My grandmother plays this game, and and she she can she could not put it down. I've I, I've, I'm like, oh, I got you Will of Fortune. She's like, baby, I love Will of Fortune, but I'm playing Tetris right now. You're gonna have to wait till later, nigga. <laughs> I hope she. I hope your she grandma's plays. racist. <laughs> <laughs> no, she used the A H, not the E R. Oh, okay, then she's cool. Yeah. And that, I hope she puts you in her will of fortune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope but, so too. Now, wouldn't you say like to be the best game of all time? Now you have to hit all aspects. Now, yes, Tetris is great on many levels, but it's it's lacking in many others. Like there is no story. Yeah. Um, I, I would, con- I would uh, concede that point. I, and I, there's certainly an argument to be made for uh, Legend of Zelda. I don't know if Ocarina of Time is. is the best Zelda game ever made, but um, <laughs> I think somebody agreed with me. There's one who. No, he likes Legend of uh, Zelda. I, I, I mean, I love, I love Ocarina of Time, but I, I uh, you know, and there's a certain argument to be made for Mario. There's a certain argument to be made for these games that, uh, upon which others stand, you know, that did more for the medium yes, than any other game. Yeah, and and I would certainly say that Half Life Two is one of the most influential, yes. most fine. You know, well-crafted <laughs> games of all time. Um, there, there are these games that th- that I think are the best in their time frame, and and in the same way that music comes in and out of fashion. And you can say, you know, the Beatles did more, and oh, that's the best band ever but because Beethoven's of what they were. Beethoven's music is exactly. absolutely amazing. Exactly. So, so it's very difficult these things that are uh, of their time to kind of compare them out of their time because especially in a in a technologically limited medium this is a medium that is is defined by the technological standard of the time that's why i think you give i personally give the edge to tetris because it ha- it doesn't matter what the technology is that that game is the same on any whatever forever it's going to be exactly the same Forever, and we're going to be playing it in our VR suits, you know, in our, in our virtual brains. boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I understand that you, you there's definitely an argument to be made for storytelling in games, and and, and I, I mean, love that stuff. And that's but. that's where that's where it becomes really difficult because you have to think about the evolution of it, and and even the evolution of gaming and what gaming means and what gaming is. Uh, it's almost the greatest game of all time so far, yeah. which is well, and sure. it's very that's all, yeah. It, that's where it becomes very difficult. As, as far as traditionally gaming, that's why I say traditionally in that, in that argument, very valid to me, Tetris as a, as a video game, very valid. I what, if I, what if I made Mass Effectress? <laughs> I don't know. No, how, much, that. how much of Miranda's ass is in Man, <laughs> Mass Effectress? All of it. Oh, I'm playing. The entire game. Yeah, I'm playing I would Mass say Effectress. Tetris even holds up against like the, the modern games that are released today because it's almost like... Uh, storytelling in movies where you had the old black and white films that had cinematography <laughs> All right, African American white films. <laughs> African American Caucasian films, thank you very much. Yeah, but the black and white films, they didn't have sound, but they had the storytelling through the visual medium down so well. You know like there are black and white, white films with sound, right? You know that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just be clear. Speakies. <laughs> <laughs> the talkies. But um, yeah, they had one aspect of it down so well that it holds up even today. And I think Tetris is just like perfect all around that you can hold up against the gameplay of Mass Effect, not the story, but the ma- the the gameplay uh, of it. I'm actually really surprised to see that there's that all three of you are going with a, a classic game and still calling it the best game of all time. I think there's a lot of great titles that I don't even think Mass it. Effect was the best game of its year. Really? Are, I, are you hating on Mass Effect? Yes. 
whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, I think <laughs> we don't have time to get into that. I think both Math Mass Effects are, are, are good games. The first one is heavily flawed, uh, and the second one it, it improves some things and ruins others. But um, I think they're both fine games, but I don't think they be belong in the discussion. Even in out of, okay, even taking Mass Effect out of the picture, you guys are looking at a game that, that's older. Is there yeah. nothing else that's out now that you think might be able to take the best game of all time because it's, it's top notch in all levels? Is there anything? Bam! So it looks like <laughs> Tetris. Tetris, I, I was swayed. Tetris. Tetris, you're on the soapbox, sir. I. Soapbox! Boom. Let it happen. <laughs> I apparently need to, to fight for Mass Effect. Now, I'm a huge Mass Effect uh, fan, but there's a lot of people that don't like it, but there's also a lot of people that don't like Tetris. My big thing is I don't think that, that a classic game, it, can, it has too much competition. Now, there's way too much in the picture to be like a, a best game. So I think you need to have something that with story and, and character. And I, I do think that there's games now that we'll be playing 100 years from now in on our virtual reality consoles, and I, I don't believe that that Tetris should be named the best game of all time. I, I really don't. You mad? <laughs> <laughs> you it's, mad? It's I just think that there's so much more to choose from now. Like the industry has changed completely, and I I think like a game like Mass Effect or or, or uh, Uncharted, where now we should start looking at franchises as a whole because you have three games trying to make one giant game. And I think those should be taken into the picture. And, and yes, when, when all, both of those trilogies are completed, I think those will be amazing games. Perhaps the best games of all time. Because they take everything. All by yourself. I don't know. Come on, Chrissy. Did I, did I sway the audience a little bit in the chat room? Uh, they still hate you. They still hate you. <laughs> I'm, just fuck, I'm giving you shit. I'm just fucking with you. Um, they think Tetris is the game of all time because everyone can pick it up and enjoy it. It's timeless. And they also think that you just love Mass Effect because it was the first game you ever played. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm laughing at you, not with no, you. The first game I ever played was Showdown on the Atari 2600. I've been gaming for a while, guys. I just, I, I, I think Mass Effect. I, I think Mass Effect. That or was Resident also in 1997. I thought the first game, Joshua, you ever played was that live role-playing Spider-Man game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Was that, was that not for that live action role playing spy? No? All right. No. No. So, at the top of the show, Jovenshire told you about a little shindig called Pitch This. So, let's find out more about the submissions of Pitch This. Woo! Woo! I felt like they, I should have said, and after that, a physical challenge. It was a double dare reference. No, All right. Oh, okay. Mark Summer's nice. Yeah. Well, all right, so uh, like we said, at the top of the hour, we had uh, the question that we posed was, what's the worst game of all time that deserves a second chance that could possibly be the best game of all time? Uh, our chat host, Chrissy, has our top three picks. Chrissy, take it away. All right, well, by the Jeff Tron 20, we've got Superman 64. Oh, wow. <laughs> Will we keep the 64 uh, e. title? E.T. by Tumor 20. Which one? E.T. And... E. Oh, this is a good one. Toe Jam and Earl by Caps Fan John. That was not a terrible game. That was a great game. Toe Jam That's, and Earl? Yeah, it's a, uh, it was a great game. I, I think E.T. E. was the most expensive game made, yeah. but the worst. I think E.T. is the worst game ever made. You know what? Uh, personally, I wouldn't have put E.T. in this mix because I don't think, even though it might be one of the worst games ever, <clears> I don't think if rebooted, it would stand up to be the best game of all time. Um, I do think that Toe Jam and Earl, no, not, not a horrible game in my opinion. I love Toe Jam and Earl, but I think if they redid it, They'd have a chance to be the greatest game of all time because those characters are awesome. What were the other two choices? Zombies Ate My Parents? Nobody? Come Zombies on. Ate My Neighbors. That was oh. actually a big uh, favorite. Or, no, the sequel, Zombies My Parents. Parents. Worse. Okay. And the other uh, two. But yeah, my vote's going to go for Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, I'm going to go with Superman because mm. we all love turning on God mode and just running rampant in these virtual worlds. Plus, how awesome mm. would it be to have a game on your Xbox 360 called Superman 64? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? I uh, told you Eminem wasn't bad. What was the other one? Uh, E.T. and Superman. Yeah, no. Uh, Superman. <laughs> I'm going to go with <laughs> Superman as well. Uh, simply because it makes sense. The comic book's got a reboot. Why not give Superman a video game reboot and give him a chance to be the Man of Steel he's always wanted to be in porn? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's blitz for you. It's a big reboot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I, I just noticed the, somebody in the chat room just wrote uh, Duke Nukem Forever, and which is an interesting, because it is terrible. And, uh, <laughs> uh, it's interesting because that game could, it had an opportunity to be about video games. It had an opportunity to be about it's really meta and, and self-aware and c comment on, you know, 20 years of the industry. And it, the designers didn't have that intention in mind, clearly. But <laughs> I think because of the, the sort of snowball of, of crazy that went into the making of that game, it really could have rocked people's socks if it had come out and been something that had, had something to say about the industry the and industry been it in yeah. first person or not. Uh, I think it could have been, I think it really could have been the greatest well, game of all time. Maybe they'll time. reboot it and we'll see it in 15 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I, think, I think we'll get another one relatively soon, but uh, I don't think it, you know, it's, it's going to be anything other than a, just a kind of standard first person shooter. Yeah. With jokes from 1992. Yeah. <laughs> Those are good jokes back then. So, Jeff, out of, out of those three, where, uh, where does your vote lie? Uh, on, on which three? E.T., Superman, Toe Gemini. Uh, well, I don't think to, the, the criteria being bad to good. Uh, I think a, a new Toy Jam and Earl would be amazing, but I think the old game is great. Well, according um, to Zombie uh, Zombifier in the chat, they redid Toy Jam and Earl on the Xbox, and it sucked. Is that so? I remember them really? working on that, but did it ever come out? <laughs> Evidently, it was that bad. Apparently, wow. they did. wiped your memory about it coming yeah, out. No, I don't remember that wow. at all. Wow, interesting. Uh, so I'll, I'll vote for uh, I'll vote for uh, ET. I'll throw you a bone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jeff can out of voting for uh, ET, but it looks like our winner is going to take uh, Superman. Uh, Chrissy, who said it? <laughs> Jefftron20. Jefftron20. Congratulations. Uh, you've won a shirt from nerdkungfu.com, and you've also won two tickets to Kamikaze Expo coming out or coming this November to the LA Convention Center. But don't worry, all three of you have won Xbox. Well, now they're just stream tokens, technically. Uh, we are building a stream store where you guys can uh, collect all your tokens to make a really cool prize or bring home a really cool prize. Yeah, it's happening. And uh, we'll be keeping track for you. And congratulations to all three of you. So we'd like to thank tonight's guest, who was ever so gracious and knowledgeable, Mr. Jeff Kanata. Thanks for having me, guys. I had a really good time. That's awesome. Thanks. And we had a great time having you. Well, that totally sounded wrong. We had fun having you as a guest. Yeah. Well corrected. Awesome. <laughs> So, Joven, you want to do your stuff? <laughs> All right. We'd like to thank some of our friends out there on the internet. Of course, go over to globalgeeknews.com. Also, omfgeek.com is a great hub for, like, all the best web content going to one place. You can also watch uh, past episodes there. Um, and, of course, this being our season finale, I'd really like to thank the stream.tv. Uh, you can watch all of our shows there as well and a bunch of other great content. And, of course... Kamikaze Expo this November 5th and 6th. There's their flyer. Uh, definitely check this out. Uh, people are saying it's the, it's the new San Diego Comic-Con done right. So get ready for that. Yeah, and make sure you follow us on the internet. We're on Twitter at GeekDownShow, on Facebook.com slash GeekDownShow, and at GeekDownShow.com. Let see. us know what kind of debates you want to see in the future. And shout out to Nerdiest Kids, of course, and 8-Bit Zombie for always supplying the fresh gear you know how we do. Oh, Got black for sexy. Sexy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, black sexy. Uh, and Jeff, what would you like to just spit out and advertise? Uh, yeah, I'm all the same stuff I already said before. TotallyRadShow.com. Uh, we can confirm it is at ShackNews.com. Uh, JeffKanata.com. Two N's, one T. Uh, and uh, Twitter is at JeffKanata. And we actually will be back for a second season. We have been screamed. Well, we, we will be back in a week, two weeks to some people. It depends on who you are. <laughs> September 28th. Uh, September 28th, list. we will be back. And with, a, with whole new debates, whole new guests. I'm still here, right? No. Nope. We'll see. Executive producer. Whole new Jovenshire. So thank you. <laughs> whole new Jovenshire. Thank you for watching. That's, that's brought us back, and, and we'll see if we can come back stronger with insight. Thanks yes, for watching. Rock.